On this special series edition of GRG, we present to you Dats in Heaven Australia. Come on the journey with us as we check out some of the best Datsuns on the East Coast, all the way from Brisbane to Adelaide and in between. Unlike part one in Southern California, we'll be featuring more than just 510s. We are Grassroots Garage and this is a Dats in Heaven series. On this episode of Grassroots Garage Dats in Heaven Australia, we have a very special guest indeed. If you're a Datsun fanatic, you'd recognise the plates NIS 16 no matter where you are from in Australia. We are so pumped to catch up with Mick and hear his stories on how he got to version 3 of his KA Swap 1600. Mick was kind enough to invite us to his shed and have a chat about his Datsun journey through the years and also participate in our State of Origin Shed Skid competition. We have, we have an absolute Datsun legend on the show. This is Mick. Mick, thanks for your time, man. No worries. Mate, we'll start here. There's, I want to show you what's behind us, but we'll start here. Tell us about your car. It's a 1970 Datsun 1600. Um, I was lucky enough to buy it off a guy, uh, Graham. He's an absolute legend as well, mate. Um, about four and a half years ago, bought it. It had um, had a rally roof vent, had a full cage, had a helmet net in the back, had a terror trip in it and everything. Um, twin Webbers, set of rally 2000s on the front. Um, sort of meant business as a bit of a Kana sort of rally car. Um, and I've sort of turned it into this, what it is now. Uh, a little bit different, KA24 Turbo with the Trimatic and uh, um, R200 with a 32 GDR Senna. So the kids Kids, come here for a second. Just wave. Just come and wave. Just smile and wave. <laughs> you, the kids are here, right? It's and it's funny because the kids know him as dad, right? Kids, kids just know him as dad. He's just dad. We know him as Mick McGregor, the guy who's been campaigning, racing, doing all this stuff with the Dats, the Datsun Gun of Queensland. Can we go right back to the start of your racing career? How did that all start, mate? It all started. I suppose I had an L series Stroker in the car, and. One of my mates, he was pretty keen going drag racing and stuff, and he hit me up one Saturday afternoon. He said, let's go to the drags. So grabbed a helmet and off we went, put the jeans on, long sleeve shirt, and went out racing. Um, went out in the L-Series Stroker. First meet, I think I went 15-4. Um, and a year later, with no changes to the car, other than rear tyres, um, ran a 14-4. So a bit of driver skill and getting things worked out the launch and stuff and shaved a second off the time with no changes to the engine so so what year was this with the when you first did that first run with the l series probably 90 96 i'm thinking 96 96 all right i love that so uh, so we'll, we'll cut right we'll come back to racing but i want to just do it chronologically so take me further back let's go right back to the start i want to hear about teenage mick mcgregor what was your first car First car was a two-door 1982 Mazda 99 Coupe IRS too as well, so haven't strayed far from the IRS. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was my first car, just HB, I think is the model they are. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, equivalent to the Cosmo mm -hmm. sort of thing. So yeah, it was sort of a cool car for then, pop-up headlights and electric sunroof and that. Yeah. Just didn't go real quick with the two litre behind it. So you started in the Mazda 929 and you've gone, this is not working for me. What was your next car? An 88 Series 2 Skyline Silhouette. <sighs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. The Gentleman's Saloon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then what? Um, 1600. That's when the 1600s came yep. into it? Yeah. I always liked them. Mm -hmm. A part-time job I had when I was younger, I worked in a bike shop and one of the, well, two of the other guys that worked full-time at that bike shop, um, used to rally 1600s mm. so i learnt my admire and respect of the cars there yeah just you know for a small car the package that they supplied um yeah mm -hmm. so it's pretty cool they used to leave burnouts leaving work sometimes which i thought was awesome <laughs> what year you reckon this is when you got that first 1600 
it would have been 95, I think. Yeah, 95. Yeah. Nice. And then so it wasn't long before you went drag racing. No, no. Because like I said, it had a... I bought it. It was dead standard. Um, L16. First mod, twin SUs. Mm -hmm. Second mod, the very next day, I put a set of extractors on it to back nice. up the twin SUs. Then the Dizzy came. And then I went, okay, this isn't enough, you know. And I um, went and got an L-series stroker built and picked up the twin Webbers out of the trading post. And yeah, the rest is history sort of thing, you know. Nice. So t so take me from that first, the first, so we've got the, you'll, we'll cut to these shots, but we've got the, so that's the, the L-series, 120 horsepower. In yep. 97, you went 14.4. Yep. Okay, so talk me through from, so when you've gone, you've gone 14.4 and you've gone, you've got the, the drag racing bug. Yeah. And then, so what was the, the progression from there to the first SR? So you've just gone, that's it, I'm going, yeah, I'm going I, all in on this sport or I, what happened? I, no, I was, I was never fully, you know, I liked it and it was something I could do. You can go do just in any everyday car sort mm -hmm. of thing. That's what I liked about it. And mate and I just used to, and back then it didn't cost bugger all to go drag racing, you know, yeah, you know, bit of bit of tank of fuel and off you went. Now Mick, mate, yeah, you can do it in an everyday car, but the second evolution of Niz 16 was far from a normal everyday car. You can do 10 passes in a night just standing on your head. Yeah. And, and, you know, the staging lanes were never that busy. Now it seems to, it's either busy or just not moving that fast in the mm -hmm. lanes. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, sold sold the sold the L complete running, and it went to, uh, I think, Blackwater mm -hmm. up north, mm -hmm. near Rocky, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did hear from him afterwards. He reckons he was slaying them up there in that thing. So <laughs> that was pretty cool. Fella drove down in an XC sedan, towing a box trailer, mm -hmm. and he took it home. And yeah, we, um, Robin Barado from Performance, he did the L series of the SR conversion for us. Mm -hmm. I picked it up on the Thursday night and then raced it at the Jamboree on the Saturday. That was how, how we cut it down to the mm -hmm. wire the first time we raced. And I think it went, I think it was 12.7 or 12.5 at the first outing. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. Just factory computer, factory turbo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, yeah, it just worked. And what'd you run, what, what'd you run with that first setup? I'll have a look the, at the wall. The, the, <laughs> so the first the SR, SR in 2000 ran 11.2. Yeah. So that's the stock, that's just, that's just out of the box it, SR. In, yeah, it was internally stock SR. Um, had a Heltec computer. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always had Heltec computers, never had issues with them. It's always been good. So always stayed with Haltech and it's, so I had the computer and a Garrett GT2530 and back then um, it was hard to get injectors and stuff. Not like nowadays, you've got choices. Mm. And I, it, SR had the side feed rail. We're hunting around for injectors for this and could not find anything to go in the standard rail. And there's a place down south called Yaguna Automotive, mm. apparently high float injectors. So we took a chance, sent them down there mm. and uh, mate, I drove that car then for a couple of years on those high float injectors and made better power obviously and had had the fuel there. Mm. Um, so that's it. It had a, you know, well, had obviously exhaust in the cooler. In the cooler was ARE back then. Mm. Um, computer, turbo, but internally stock SR, no cams, nothing. Mm. And it went, yeah, 11.2. 11.2. So yeah. It was pretty respectable sort of thing. And did, did it end up, um, getting tired for the for the rebuild or you just went I want I want more I think it might have expired that car but I did I did actually crash a car on the road pretty big time I don't know if you guys know that no. in 2001 um, I was in hospital for about four weeks after that accident mm. so that was that stock SR and the car ended up on its lid sort of thing or on its side I should say eventually mm -hmm. um, but that that engine went into the um, second car, which is that one. Which is this one. Yeah. So that's, so this was purchased, this this shell was purchased 2001-ish. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Got ya. Yeah. Yeah. It had a, it had a small front ender. I think the other corner, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. it had a small hit. I think yeah. I bought it from the auctions mm -hmm. and um, repaired it. And mm -hmm. other than a Smith's oil pressure gauge, the thing was dead stock. Mm. So from the auctions, so that was nice. a, that was a nice little find. Basically built that up in my parents' shed. Um, 
yeah, put the SR and everything in that. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember trying to get it started. The SR, after sitting for a while, it didn't want to, so we actually toast started it down the road and she fired up eventually. <laughs> So it looks like you PB'd around, around 08 with this one. Yeah, that was SR, obviously, as it mm, says. Mm. That was, you know, and that was, you know, that was a long evolution, just slowly creeping up, slowly creeping up on it. Yeah. So um, was that, so when you first built it, did you, you took, stripped it out and this is, this is how it came out originally? No, no, it, um, it was almost a, a replica of the first car because my first car was a white one, yep. a white 1600. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, this car was originally white. Mm -hmm and basically yeah that's how it went back together sort of thing yeah so sr yeah. and that again mm -hmm. same plates um, as well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. stays yeah. the same plates mm -hmm. so i've mm -hmm. always kept the same plates i've always do i change them or not but then i'm like no nah, you know everything's attached with this so yeah, definitely yeah you know, they're a bit boring but you know um the the reason this car went green i was at a workshop and someone backed into the passenger rear door mm. and stove the door in mm. and that's where it all sort of stemmed from it was like yeah, you know, I was gonna fix it, and then I, oh, well, you know what, might do a respray, mm. and you know, respray turns into a color change, and you know, turns into a full trim, turns into, you know, it yeah, just, it snowballs. just sort of didn't stop, sort of thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, didn't stay off the road for oh, too long. Yeah. Like at the time, I, I worked. I oh, know not then actually I didn't. Um, mm -hmm. Later on, I worked in a family business, which is a smash repair shop. Oh yeah. So yeah, so like it was on the weekends and you know any chance i got i was up to up the workshop working on this you know mm. stripping what i could doing doing what i could you know obviously I, I didn't i didn't touch the gun i'm you know i'm not gonna not gonna spray leave them to do so, their yeah, work. yeah mate 100%. and um but i did everything i could to help prep you know yeah we had the car up on stools and painted underneath and stuff as mm. well it was all two packed underneath mm -hmm. so yeah i like the little feature where the vent has been color coded the, yeah, the, the, which is all not like this. Yeah. all chrome on this one, but it's yeah, yeah they've touched it up. Which yeah, is, yeah, I think that's cool. Feel a little feature. Yeah. A lot of guys delete them, right? They just, they just. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a nice little. It sort of it's, ties the car together. Throws. Through. It does. It changes the yeah. line so much. That's it does. Like, yeah. This thing, I don't know if you noticed, no front guard indicators. No, I didn't notice. But yeah, it's little features. I, I love that. I like yeah. them. Yeah, yeah which you like, did the delete on that one too. Yeah, yeah? I did the delete yeah. on that one yeah. and that one up there. Take me back to say 2007, 2006. You're at Jamboree, you're racing. Give me some of the th your memories or your highlights from that time. Oh. Just getting through rounds and, and not breaking things because mm. I think around that time, I was really starting to punish. I already had um, custom shafts and that and stuff in it and Porsche CVs, but, you know, I was beginning to break those and DR30 stub axles. Mm. I was... You know, because I had to upgrade all the stuff. Mm. So you had DR30 stub axles. So they were, you know, a bit bigger than standard. But, you know, I was breaking a few of them. Mm. You know, there was times where I'd put one in and I'd go out and I'd line up for the next pass and I'd break it. And I'd go, oh, okay, <laughs> back to the pits. And, you know, you had a stockpile of them sort of thing. So, mm. you know, that was the worst case scenario. You break two in a row. Mm -hmm. um, but then I went and um, got a billet set custom made. Mm -hmm. um, mate who's a fabricator or you know machinist um machine some up and that mm -hmm. so that was pretty good um but eventually i broke those too because we also we put um a gdr center into the long nose diff mm -hmm. r32 gdr mm -hmm. center and use the long nose gears so and so it's got the bigger inner stubs then we use the gdr axles mm -hmm. and i had to buy a set of four so i could use the inner and outer six bolt flange mm -hmm. and then also then a billet stub axle mm -hmm. and companion flange. But like I said, eventually I broke one of those too. I've got them over there as little trophies. So I see on the wall here, I see Brad's um, 1600. Yep. Which is back in the 
photos we're looking at here is a pack car. Are there any other cars from that time? I'm looking at that gun. That's for me. That's the highlight. But what are what are some of the cars that you remember going? This is the car I used to love racing, or things like that. It was pretty tricky because the class that I was sort of stuck in for some reason. Well, I, it's an auto, so I run a trans brake. I couldn't run in the street class and stuff. Mm -hmm. So. I'm driving a street car, but I'm racing in modified compacts. Mm, mm. So they're the sort of things I had to race. Mm. So I'm out there in a street car, looking, you know, like that sort of thing, mm. and racing things that are stick it up race cars. And yeah, you know, mm. they, they got a they got a tow team. They, you know, they got a, they got a team around the car. Mm, mm. And you know, it was me and mates sort of thing doing it. And yeah. That's how it was, you know. Yeah. Or the wife as well. She was she was always there helping out, mm, like mm. in. Um, some of the photos, or a lot of the photos you see, some of the ones that have been used in magazines or drag shots, you can see my wife in the background out on the start line. So That's mad. I love that. You've led to my next question. He's a, he's a pro. He's done this a million times. <laughs> so so we, 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 Mix pulled out for us the magazine, and I'm doing this already. Mix pulled out the magazine features of the car, and it's not one, it's not two. How many is it? I think there's 11, I think. Some of them, <laughs> some of them are repeat stories, yeah. but they're actually different editions yeah. of magazines. So, I love yeah. that. And our friend, and, and our friend Dave Reed's done a few of the photo shoots. He's a, he's a legend of a bloke, great photographer. Um, so give me your favourite. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot here, but give me your most memorable, your favourite magazine feature. It probably was um, Dave's photo shoot. No, that wasn't Dave's photo shoot. Oh, no. Sorry, Dave. Sorry, but Dave. No. no. we're not sorry, mate. You missed it. Hey? <laughs> no, but um, I did a photo shoot at the drag strip and they let me do a skid. Mm -hmm. And that was for the cover photo of one of the fast fours. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And that yeah. turned into a big poster and that, which was pretty awesome. Yeah. So did you, growing up as a kid, like, like I would never, I just would never think I'd ever have a car on the cover of fire. Was that a dream of yours to have a cover, a car on the cover? Nah, never, no, never it dreamed just, of it. Just happened. Yeah, just wow. never dreamed of it. Like mm. I said, the car, you know, I just went to repair it sort of thing, and it's like, oh, let's do a respray, let's do a color change, and mm. yeah, it just blew up sort of thing. And how did so the editors? How does it come about? How does something like that come about? Um, I knew that they were going to do the shoot. And then um, I think the photographer made mention that, hey, we're looking at putting this on the cover. So, yeah, that sort of, I was like, wow, mm -hmm. that sort of blew me away a bit. Mm -hmm. So we've got, to go, we've got to go heavy now, mate, unfortunately. We're sitting here with this beautiful Datsun 1600, but there's yep. something else behind us here. You've got to do a little sweep shot, mate. Look at this thing. So talk to me about the day that this went down. Mate, it was first run of the day. Um, Unfortunately, it was a new setup. Um, first pass out, so I didn't even um, I didn't even trans brake it off the line. Mm. I just foot braked it, um, and it went off the foot brake. It still PB'd, well, matched my PB to half track time and mile. Mm. Um, and then at about probably three quarter track, everything went a bit pear shaped. The car turned hard left, and yeah, okay. um, from the left lane, and still managed to hit the wall at 45 degrees almost sort of thing. Um, Dave Reed has got some really good photos of that. So I'm not sure whether, you know. Good, good. we're saying good, we're saying traumatic, yeah, or we're saying? Yeah, <laughs> Mate, he's, he's got pictures of the car, it's actually airborne riding the Gosh. wall, you know. Um, so did you ever figure out what made it Mate, no, off? still to this day, don't know. Because it could have been a diff thing, could have been a front thing, with yeah. just one of those things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've actually got I have got some video footage that someone sent me after the event. Yeah. Um, so you can watch it all slowly and pause it and whatever, mm -hmm. and it's it's still hard to work out what went on. Mate. So. And you were all right? Yeah, mate. Um, I banged, banged my knee on the steering column, um, but, mate, walked out. That was okay. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. got out on the track and um, walked away from the car mm -hmm. after it pinballed because um, it had no steering because that after that front wheel hit the wall, it sort of mm. tore the radius rod out and I landed back on the track, steering with three wheels. Mm -hmm. I managed to cross the line um, 90 degrees to this, the finish line and it crossed it, I think it was 10, 10 to it, 90 
90 something mile an hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it went 10 2 still. I was doing 115 at half track. Yeah, see, none of so, you blokes have, have crossed the line sideways, have you? Huh? It, was, it, was, it was 90 degrees. <laughs> That's a scary thing. When you look at the video, it was 90 degrees to the track. Um, and it didn't tip over, and it was like still doing basically 100 mile an hour yeah. across the finish yeah. line. And it, I didn't actually, I stayed in my lane till I crossed the line. So the lights and everything, so you know, I lost the race anyway. But yeah, because I, it was, like I said, it was only the first run of the day. Mm -hmm. So I let the other car go. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think I was racing, um, I can't remember his last name, Ben. He's got an RX-8. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, like it was an out-and-out -out race car mm. in an RX-8 sort of thing, you know, that's a class that I had to race in sort of thing, you know, in mm -hmm. that car, even though it's a streeter. So. so this now is kept as a bit of an art piece, as a bit of a, um, a bit of a thing? Yeah, no, just getting time to get around and do something with it, what do I do, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I can't go, on, well, the back doors have been modified, but the front doors, they're really good doors, I'm mm. not gonna throw them sort of thing, mm. you know? Mm. I have contemplated um, cutting this side of the car off and mounting it on the wall, mm -hmm. um, doing a bit of shed art with that. Mm -hmm. um, that might involve a few beers and a few mates to, to get it up on the wall. But, you know, one day it will happen, I reckon. We have absolutely taken up heaps of mixed time. Mick, you're an absolute legend. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming, guys. Well, that wraps up this episode of Grassroots Garage, but before we go, we promised you a shed skid. And representing Queensland in our state of origin battle, no take it away, Mick. We've twisted his arm. Fire. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> what do you reckon of that? Hey? Right? Oh, she's mad. <laughs> <laughs>